Bass here, and welcome to day 19 of Shocktoberfest 2021. Today we're going to be talking about Don Coscarelli's 1979 classic, Phantasm. This movie has done quite a name and a reputation for itself. I mean, to the point where it spawned countless sequels. I, I, to be honest, I have lost count. However, we're going to talk about the first one alone, because honestly, I've done the 101s before, of the whole series and to be honest it gets draining and I don't want to I don't want this episode to go like 25 minutes like it had in the past we're moving forward to something completely different so the movie begins with a young boy named Tommy out at a place called Morningside Cemetery where he's fooling around with a young woman and while he's fooling around with her she stabs him to death quite a way to start off a movie well right after that happens Tommy's friends, Jody and Reggie, are at the funeral, wondering what happened. They found, they hear that he had committed suicide, which obviously, as the audience we know, is not the case, so it's a great startup. While they're taking care of things at the funeral and leaving, Jody decides he's going to be getting out of town. He, he has to get out. However, he has a young brother named Michael, who he knows that if he leaves him behind, it's going to cause a lot of drama and chaos, because Michael is very attached to his brother Jody, because... At, at one point, two years prior to this death of Tommy, their parents had died. So, it's pretty much a simple case of their, them needing to stick together as a family. Well, Michael's a little rambunctious and likes to ride around and kind of sneak on people. And while he's sneaking on Jody at the Morningside Cemetery at Tommy's funeral, he notices the, the Undertaker, otherwise known as the Tall Man, taking the coffin out of where they are going to bury Tommy in the mausoleum and shove him back into the hearse where he drives off. Seems a little odd. Well, while Mike is running around trying to figure out what's going on with Morningside Cemetery and the things he saw, he's getting the impression that Jody is going to leave. And at one point he sees Jody leaving a bar with the woman that killed Tommy at the beginning of the film. He notices them having some fun out in the cemetery and he gets quickly attacked by a small little figure, goes running away, Jody notices this, and tries to save him, though he got a little bit, uh, how do we put it? Oh yeah, cock blocked. While Jody is scolding Michael about why he was doing what he was doing, he sends Mike away to go stay at home and just not do anything. However, Mike's not going to have much of this, and he wants to get down to the bottom of what's going on at Morningside Cemetery. He breaks into the basement of the mausoleum, where an assistant of the tall man catches him, and there's a little bit of a chase, and then all of a sudden we see a metal ball with a spike flying through the air, and it happens to hit the assistant right in the head, killing him after pretty much giving him a full frontal lobotomy. Well, not necessarily up the nose, but just right in the skull. I mean, it's pretty gruesome, to be honest. Michael goes back to talk to Jody about what was going on. A big bug and start attacking Michael and Jody. And Reggie comes in and sees what's going on. And they're all in it to try to figure out how to fight the tall man. They go back to Morningside Cemetery, figure out that there is something a little more supernatural of another dimension. They are taking dead bodies, cutting them down to size, turning them into dwarves, and pretty much sending them back into another dimension to be uh, possessed or pretty much brainwashed to come back and serve the tall man. Well, they figure out a way to dispose of all of the dwarves, sending them back into the dimension before they are pretty much brainwashed, and Jody and Michael decide that they are going to lure the tall man to an area where he will fall down a mine shaft. Well, Michael is able to do that much as Reggie is trying to get people that were abducted from the tall man in Morningside Cemetery out. The lady, in, you know, the, uh, the lady that killed Tommy eventually stabs him, and while that's going on, Michael is able to lure the tall man to fall through the mine shaft to his demise. Then we find out a big plot twist. It was all a dream. Yep, Mike dreamt the whole thing. It turned out that he hadn't slept in a lot of days, and he finally fell asleep after his brother Jody died in a car wreck. So, <laughs> all that just to find out it was all a dream. Or was it? Because Reggie decides he wants Mike to go pack up and they're gonna they're gonna leave and get the hell out of Dodge. While while Mike's packing, he catches eyes with the tall man through a window. 
and that's the end. At least for this movie. Oh, now it's time to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this film. We're going to talk about what I don't like first. There's not a lot that uh, I don't like. I mean, I guess the concept of crushing the corpses down into dwarves, like how they do it, uh, there's got to be some sort of physical uh, questioning going on there. Because if you crush down, I mean, I, it's, I think it's a matter of physics and maybe... Uh, basic biology or, you know, like of, of the human anatomy. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm no doctor, but I've seen one on TV. But it just, some of it doesn't make sense. And so I'm, I'm very I'm very confused on how they're able to still run around after being crushed like that or, or dismembered in a way where they are put together. I mean, hey, morticians and undertakers and whatnot, I mean, they, they can do some really great things with, you know, with people that are no longer alive and make them look good for... Uh, you know, funerals and whatnot, but never have I ever seen a mortician turn a six-foot-tall human being into a dwarf. Never have. Probably never will. Now I think I just made people say challenge accepted, and I hope I haven't. There are some moments in the film that make me kind of go, oh, that was kind of lazy. Like the moment when Jody and Michael get out of the morning site, out of the mausoleum, and they run into Reggie and he says, oh yeah, the girls that got abducted earlier, I, I, I got him out, I got him out, it's okay, they're safe. I'm like, man, it, it just kind of, it was kind of like a, a quick little fart. It's like, well, what happened to the girls? Oh, I got them out. Oh, never mind. You know, it's just kind of, you see these characters for a brief moment and then they're gone. But they're okay. Because normally when we see somebody for a brief moment in a horror film, they, they usually die. So it was kind of reverse and at the same time not for the better. Now, I mean, what I like about the film, I mean, there, I mean, the special effects, even for 1979, were actually pretty good. I mean, the steel ball flying around before it killed or tried to kill people was pretty awesome. Even, even the flying bugs, I mean, that was actually, I mean, innovative for its time. I mean, it did look like something out of uh, like, a, the, like the Critters franchise that would come out later, you know, in the 1980s. But still, I mean, for what it's worth. The special effects for this movie were not bad at all. I actually approve of them because of, you know, sometimes less is more. Now the acting in this film is not too bad. I mean, obviously when you have young teenage kids in a film, there have been the talks of directors complaining about child actors or child actresses being a little hard to work with. Now, however, seeing the performance of Bill Thornberry as Michael in this film, honestly, I think he probably was decent to work with, and chances are he was probably a little older than 13 when he filmed this because he did have a more young demeanor than what he probably had as possibly a an older teenager, so I give props on that one. But of course we have to talk about the late great Angus Scrim as the tall man. This guy, honestly, he doesn't have to say much. All of, just his facial expressions, just the way how he moves. It doesn't really have to do much. It just, no, he's menacing. He's out to get you. And there's one moment that's even more disturbing where Michael is looking around outside in the neighborhood and he sees the tall man walking down the other side of the street. And he stops by Reggie's ice cream truck. And when he opens up the door, you see the cold front come out. And he stops and he just takes a smell. It's almost as if, like, being working in like a mortuary or a cemetery that cold you know that they have to keep bodies at bay it's almost like it's home to him that cold is home other than that it's about time to grade this one i mean there i mean i do enjoy the film but there are some things that uh, a lot of loopholes and plot holes that i just kind of i don't know how to feel about it so i'm gonna go ahead and give this one a solid b because like i said good film Great delivery, great performance, but there are moments in the story that leave me questioning what happened. And they don't even tend to you know, answer them in the following sequels. So that's why the grade is as low as it is at the moment. I mean, I might come back and do a retrospect and maybe give it a better grade. I'm not sure. But until then, I have to keep focusing on other movies. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you leave a thumbs up. Leave a thumbs down if you didn't agree with my review. And I totally understand because... You know, constructive criticism is important in this day and age. Also, make sure that you share on social media, but most importantly, push that little red button. And don't forget to ring the bell for instant notifications. Ah, oh, man.
be getting up on day 20 tomorrow. It's pretty crazy, huh? Two thirds of the way done. Are you excited? I'm excited. We got a whole lot more coming up for you. We even have an anime film coming up again soon. I just have to uh, do a little more research on it and I want to make sure that I get it done right. Until then, I'm Wildman Wes and we will see you next time for day 20 of Shocktoberfest 2021. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and as always, stay scared folks.